Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're getting an update from Koya Silver, traded on the CSE under the symbol KUYA, also on the OTCQB under the symbol KUYAF. We are chatting with the president and CEO, David Stein. Just to bring everybody up to speed, Koya Silver does hold the Bethania Silver project. That's in central Peru. That's what we're going to be talking about today because the company did just release an initial resource estimate from this Bethania project. The company also holds the Silver Kings property in Ontario. Let's get into this initial resource estimate here. This resource comes in at a total indicated and inferred of almost 14 million ounces of silver equivalent. That is just short of 6 million ounces silver equivalent in the indicated category. Average grade 451 grams per ton silver equivalent. Inferred makes up about 8 million ounces silver equivalent at an average grade of a little bit less of 356 grams per ton. Now, this resource is comprised of three main mineralized structures. David, let's start off just with a broad comment in terms of this initial resource coming in at just under 14 million ounces silver equivalent. How did that fit into the company's expectation of getting this initial resource out? Well, thanks, Corey. It definitely was a pleasant surprise to see those numbers. All we really had to work with was some very uh, now outdated kind of historical resources. And they were based on uh, just essentially the underground sampling and extending the known grades of the veins at depth. So we were able to do a drill program last year, 5,000 meters, and incorporate all that new data into the our model, our resource model. And yeah, I mean, we got um, you know more ounces than we expected um, in terms of where those ounces are coming from. Really, a lot of it comes from the upper levels of the of the mine that we thought would have been more mined out. But what we were able to do was when we were drilling. Last year, we were hitting some new veins and some some branches off of the main veins that we previously did not consider. They still contain some good resources there. So we're finding that there's actually a lot more resource there in the shallower levels, which is good because obviously it's cheaper to mine shallower material, all else being equal. And everything is, you know, our, our main, main main vein systems, which I know we'll talk about later, are all open at depth still. We're, you know, as, as sort of as deep as we were able to go with this drill program, we're still hitting high grade mineralization. You know, it's just sort of begging us to go now go even deeper and, and get more ounces at depth. But in the meantime, we're very, very happy, as I said, with this initial resource. It confirmed what we, you know, knew about the deposit at the upper levels around the mine area. And now we can sort of move on and start building on that. Well, David, let's dig in a little bit more to the shallow resources versus what you think might be there at depth, because it looks like approximately two thirds, if you just rounded it off, are at that a level that's above the main historical production at it, that uh, 4670 level. There's a lot of meat on the bone there. But if you think there's a lot more down to depth, how will your future drilling bring those into future resource estimates? Well, what we need to do is drill deeper. Uh, And how we can do that is uh, two ways. Uh, We can actually go underground and just start and drill from underground in our next program. So as a as a refresher, we did our entire drill program from surface uh, in in, uh, last year. And so, uh, you know, the mine is uh, there, you know, there is a mine there and we can, you know, we can go down actually probably to that 4670 level that you mentioned and set up some drill uh, pads there and drill from underground. So that would be one way that we would get uh, deeper uh, drill holes in the next, you know, in our phase two drill program. And the other way would be just to modify the surface drilling and and set them up in you know in different places to target deeper uh, deeper areas. So we we may do both. We may do one or the other. We'll we'll have to evaluate that as as the year goes on. We're currently working on some surface work that's going to basically prepare us for that next round of of drilling that we'll we'll uh, do in a few months. 
Okay, so drilling coming. Can you give us a little bit more information regarding these three main mineralized structures? There are three different vein systems, as I said, that make up this resource. Where approximately on the project are these located, and what's the relationship of each of these to each other, please? Sure. So the the mining concession, and just as a reminder, we when we started this company, we really just had the mining concession itself, which is this sort of long, skinny rectangle, which is 1.5 kilometers long. And then we've added to it, we've got now a lot of ground to the north and south of that concession. And then we've got land to the west now, all the way over to the Carmelita, which is a second or er, earlier stage, but similar silver, uh, high grade silver lead zinc mine. So that's the picture, the three vein systems and, and basically all the veins in the resource, they they sort of run along the length of that of that mining concession that we have, the original Bethania mine concession, uh, which is northwest southeast trending. What we did was we, we, you know, the the when the geologists were looking at all the drill data, they started seeing a lot more veins than had been previously known. So we we ended up having resources on we identified 20 veins a couple of them were not didn't have enough data to actually put resources on them so we, they ended up having 18 veins that have some resource on them and of course there there there's you know some of them are a bit are bigger more important some of them are less important but 18 veins are in the resource then what we did was we subdivided those 18 into ones grouped them together into ones that seem to be associated with the same bigger mineralized structures and so that's the three vein systems that you mentioned so the three vein systems are Dose de Mayo, Victoria and Española. Dose de Mayo and Española are towards the southern end of the property they actually cross over each other so you can kind of say that they're on top of each other but they they actually crisscross uh the structures crisscross one another but they are distinct and Dose de Mayo is actually where most of the historical production has taken place and it's where we got some of our best drill results and still open at depth uh Victoria looking great too we have not done as much drilling along strike um on Victoria but it also is open at depth and it's got some of the best grades on average it's got higher grades than the other two uh, vein systems so we're very very excited about that one and then finally Española is actually separate to the north may intersect with the other two at depth uh, like several several hundred meters deeper but right now it's a couple hundred meters 200 meters to the north it actually contains the biggest resource of the three because it's got it's got that long strike length that we have with the with the dose de Mayo because because of the of the we've drilled you know we've drilled it a little further along strike but it has much less mining on it historically so so more of that vein is still there sitting in in the ground and so we've got almost half of the resource in of the inferred and indicated resource together is actually in the Española system. Well, David, you'd also mentioned the Carmelita prospect, which is kind of adjacent to Bethania. It's a big focus for the company to be able to grow into the future. Could you walk people through, not familiar with that target, what you're looking forward to with Carmelita moving forward? Sure. It's it's three kilometers to the west, so it's trucking distance. If if we if and when we do find something there, we we can truck it to Bethania, and that was always the idea. So what we like about it is that. First of all, there were guys mining it. Uh, it's smaller scale. It's what you'd call an artisanal mine, but they were mining it up until actually early 2020. Currently, not, n nothing happening there uh, now that we've taken over ownership of it. But we intend to now go back and, much like we're doing at Bethania right now, start at surface, understand the orientation of the veins, and then then go at depth and start drilling. With Carmelita, what we another thing we liked was that when we went and we did our own sampling, we were getting some very, you know, high grade numbers right at surface, very similar silver grades to what we see at Thania. So it looks kind of like a, almost like a lookalike system and just, you know, not as much as known about it, but the footprint of it seems to be similar to Bethania. So we are very excited and we'll do a lot more work on that over the course of this year. 
Let's also talk about some of the other newer surface targets, I guess, like this hilltop zone. You've mentioned it a couple of times. We were talking off mic about it. What other information can you give us on the hilltop zone and any other of these nearer surface targets? Right. So the hilltop zone is something we kind of discovered or did a lot of work on earlier in 2021. Most of the veins in the hilltop zone that we've identified at surface uh, actually trend in a obliquely to the main Bethania uh, direction of mineralization. So they kind of trend to the north and south. So when we were actually able to acquire the northern and southern sort of properties adjacent to, to the Bethania concession, that really helps uh, consolidate the hilltop story now. And, and because those veins do look like they're, they're going off to the, to the north and south. So now we have all that property to ourselves. But we, uh, we did get some of the best surface samples we've ever had earlier in 2021, including the Santa Elena vein, which uh, had 91 ounces per ton silver plus, plus high gold. I believe it was five grams gold in one sample and some other you know, high grade silver gold samples in that same vein. So we're gonna do more work on that this year look to basically get as much data as we can at surface and then drill it at depth and start, you know, building some resources there in the hilltop zone. I mean, we're not that far away from the main Bethania mine at, at, at uh, Santa Elena or the hilltop zone in general. You're talking about maybe 500 meters distance between the between the two zones. So it's very likely that they will connect up at depth somehow. And uh, that's another thing. That's another target for us to explore is, is essentially the space in between hilltop and Bethania. And then finally, I would say in terms of the new areas that we acquired in that announcement we made in November, there are some targets on there or prospects that have been identified by previous, you know, through previous exploration that's very, very close to Bethania. Like we're talking less than a kilometer in some cases. So we're going to those spots and we're going to be sampling them and then seeing if we can put together some you know, some veins and some geometry at surface. And then again, just like Bethania, just like Hilltop, just like Carmelita, then you put together the story at surface, then you start drilling it at depth. What's really nice about the Bethania district, and we we're, you know, we're gonna call it a district going forward, the silver mineralization, there's still a lot of it coming right to surface. I'm not gonna say like it all comes to surface, because chances are there's hidden veins as well at depth, but we're, we're seeing so many veins at surface in all of these different zones that I just mentioned that we've got our work cut out for us for the, for, you know, for the next few years, just mapping them, sampling them, drilling them, and then ultimately adding them to the resource. Yeah, David, there's no shortage of targets, that's for sure. But for 2022, if you can summarize for our audience, just about how many meters do you expect to drill and then which areas will get, you know, a rough idea of which areas will get the focus for 2022. Look, I think we'd at a minimum, we'd like to duplicate what we did last year. <laughs> we are planning on building a mill this year as well. So we've got our work cut out for us. But we do want to keep the exploration train going along the, at the same time. You know, that's what we, we call our dual track value creation, which uh, any if you've seen my corporate presentation, I, you'll see that I've mentioned that before. So we do want to keep that going. And, and we've got so many exciting targets that we we definitely want to, you know, we want to do some work there and keep adding value on the exploration side. So I'd say at, at a minimum, you know, uh, do it. We'd look to do another 5000 meters at some point, uh, you know, sooner rather than later this year. And we'll do it, you know, once we've done the appropriate surface work so that we can actually, you know, target those drill holes and make, you know, the best use of them basically drill for you know for resource growth rather than drill for exploration you know we don't we don't need to find veins because we can find them at surface basically is our philosophy so so with that being said i would say probably the main targets for this year's drilling will be uh hilltop zone and the deeper bethania mine possibly towards the end of the year it would be sort of a third priority would be would be drilling carmelita but that will that will be uh that will be later i think the we want to focus on you know the bethania concession still because we've got we've got a lot of room to grow there and that's obviously you know adds immediately to our mine economics if we can find more ore there 
Now, you mentioned mine economics there, David, and I realized early on you guys just released this resource. But look, this is some pretty decent grade when you consider the indicated category about 451 grams per ton silver equivalent. And a lot of that is close to surface. So it's, again, hard to say what the economics actually will be. But I know that there are a lot of investors looking at Kuya Silver saying this is a near term production play as well because of some of the past work that's been done on the project and the aspect of having these past producing mines. What can you tell us in terms of taking this resource and showing economics or actually moving towards production? Well, I guess there's a couple answers to that, Corey. Um, in terms of showing economics, we are we we are going to deliver a PEA in the next couple of months. So, you know, that, that will have uh, some economics in there. I think the important thing there is going to be um, you know, because people know this is still early days on the exploration side. This mine's going to get a lot bigger and it's going to go for a lot more years. But what that will do is kind of show, you know, from a third party perspective, an independent third party perspective, what the CapEx looks like and what the OpEx or operating costs look like. And we're very, very confident that they're going to look really, really good. So we're we're excited about that. In terms of the actual sort of process to get into production here, we did get our environmental uh, permit, uh, environmental impact uh, approved last year, actually in 2020. Uh, so now we are working on the uh, construction side of it um, and we're very, very close on that. So once we get that uh, box ticked, we can look at uh, starting to build something there. Well, David, just I know it's still earlier days and you're still working out some of the details, but how do you envision the production profile being once you get up? I know it's going to be smaller scale, like the mill throughput, the, the ounces per year. What's a what's a rough idea that you're looking at? And then do you see that as being a way to generate revenues that will continue to fund the company's exploration as you get that up and running down the road? Yeah, so what we permitted is 350 tons per day. So at that rate, and, you know, based on the grades that we would expect to mine over the first few years, uh, you know, you'd be looking something in the neighborhood of, you know, 2.5 million ounces of silver equivalent. I mean, I'm just taking the sort of the expected grades that we'd be mining and multiplying that by 350. So it's something anyone can do on their own. But that's basically what the math works out to. In terms of the costs, we, you know, we, we're we we obviously have our own internal numbers. We're very, very confident that the margins on this mining will be very good and that we can make free cash flow even at that, you know, 350 initial production rate. Um, it will be very po profitable. So we, you know, we would look at having cash flow to reinvest in the project, either in exploration or doing a, another mill expansion or maybe both. But, uh, you know, we'll... We'll have to we'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. But it, it's definitely a nice problem to have. Well, David, there's a lot going on with this company. And very interesting to see this initial resource and all the expansion potential. But as I mentioned, there are also people saying this can be in production in the relatively near term. So, again, a lot of moving parts here. If anybody wants any follow up uh, answers to any of your questions on any aspect of the company, please email us either fleck at kereport.com or shad at kereport.com. We'll also follow up as we get some more news, especially on the work that's going to be happening this year. David, thank you as always for your time. We'll follow up on the back of some more news. Thanks, guys. Uh, my pleasure.